Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. We're at episode number 1538, coming into the final stretch of our deep dives into the Solo A Star Wars Story Expanded Edition. That's the novelization for Solo A Star Wars Story by Mer Lafferty. And today we're going to look at Lando's decision to beat feet from Savarine and leave Beckett, Han, Chewie, and Kira high and dry on the planet as Enfys Nest and her Cloud Riders arrive. And of course, before Dryden Voss gets there too. So here's what we know. The, <laughs> the Falcon comes in hot and, you know, it crash lands for all intents and purposes. It sounds like the way the novelization is written, the damage to the landing gear isn't nearly as severe as what we saw in the movie. And it seems like it's a much more graceful landing on the landing pad at Savarine in the novel by comparison to what happened in the movie. Although... I guess you could say it's played for a little bit more visual comic effect in that sense, and it's probably a little bit harder con to convey in novel form, but be that as it may, the Falcon looks 10 years older and not a 10 years under the tender care of Lando kind of older, at least that's the way Lando is thinking about it as he reflects upon the damage to the Falcon. Han, of course, is thinking, hey, he promised me that he wouldn't care what shape the Falcon was in as long as he got us out of this alive, but yeah, Lando is absolutely not thinking about that right now. He's thinking about the Falcon and all the damage and of course L3 too and after that whole I hate you I know business which I thought was really a nice little inversion there he goes in to the ship he's muttering about wanting to go into his quarters and there's a scene where L3 is surveying her circumstances as you know part of being on the Falcon and sees that you know through the cams Lando is in his quarters and he is trying to put his cape collection back into order and as it says in there violently throwing aside anything that's been torn or burned or has blood on it I don't know how suddenly blood would have gotten on the darn things in the midst of the melee I, there wasn't really anything crazy bloody going on or anything like that but Apparently, somehow, I guess that happened. Maybe it had to do with all of the uh, the fighting. Kira isn't wearing the cape that she was wearing when she went on to Kessel, so maybe she got blood on her cape or something like that. Probably from Kay Tulsite, the, uh, the pike guy that she killed. So, all right. Yeah, there's a reason for blood. Anyway, see, we figured it out. So... He's definitely unhappy, and L3 is taking note of everything that's gone wrong, that you know there are antennas and sensors that are missing, and it you know, keeps her from really assessing what's going on with the ship. But as she's starting to integrate with the other two personalities that make up the computer systems of the Falcon, she starts to have conflicting feelings about Han, about the fact that you know, she, apparently, even though as L3, she doesn't care for Han, as, you know, part of a ship overall, she realizes that, you know, anybody who takes care of the ship is going to be somebody that the ship actually likes. And Han had been okay, if annoying, in L3's assessment, at least looking at it through the lens of the Falcon. But she also takes special note of the fact that Chewbacca is going around the ship and making note of what has been damaged and what hasn't been damaged and that sort of thing and finds it to be a demonstration of a level of compassion that L3 did not see very often in people with technical backgrounds of any kind so she you know was definitely more uh, you know more kindly disposed to Chewbacca and definitely he endeared herself himself to the ship and to L3 a lot more by that you know simple otherwise unobserved act of care for the Falcon. And before L3 is finally absorbed into the consciousness of the Falcon, there is one last conversation that she and Lando get to have, and it's just as Lando is preparing to jump out of the area of Savarine. It is as touching and acerbic as you might expect, and ultimately it ends with L3 asking Lando if he would have freed her if she had asked, and, you know, I never even thought that that was really an issue. I always thought that she was you know, not really, you know, a slave to Lando in any sense, that they were really working together, even though, you know, there was that oddity in the relationship and whatnot. But Lando doesn't actually say, yeah, I would have, or anything like that. He kind of dodges around the question and ultimately says, hey, look at it this way. You're now a Corellian freighter that can jump into hyperspace, and your personality is in this 
in this ship. So you are the most unique ship in the galaxy and we're still together. And, you know, I have my best friend and co-pilot here. So, you know, in a way you own me as much or more than I own you. And, you know, that in itself is heartbreaking when you consider that then they're ultimately separated once Han wins the Falcon away from Lando. But it is a rather beautiful way to wrap up their friendship as L3's consciousness is finally absorbed into the Falcon. And she says, you know, to herself or thinks to herself, this is tolerable, <laughs> which is a very L3 thing to say. Now, I'm going to take a quick break and then we're going to talk about the actual length of the Kessel Run itself because there's what Han says, there's what Chewie says, and there's what L3 knows for a fact. So let's tell you what the deal is with that after a quick word from our friends at Nissan. Stay tuned. Hey, Rebel Rouser. If you haven't checked out Nissan's Best in the Galaxy customizer, then what's keeping you? Here's the link to do it real quick. It's sw7x7.com slash custom. That'll get you right there. You can customize a Rogue, an Ultima, or a Titan, and give it a design inspired by the Millennium Falcon, by an Imperial Heavy TIE Fighter, Moloch's Landspeeder, or four other different designs. Check it out, sw7x7.com slash custom. And hey, Solo A Star Wars Story is now available on digital, and it's coming September 25th on Blu-ray and new in 4K Ultra HD as well. Welcome back. All right, so here we go with the actual length of the Kessel Run. So Lando, of course, claimed that it could not be done in anything less than 20 parsecs. When Han arrives on Savarine, he brags to somebody that the Millennium Falcon made the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs. Chewbacca utters a <laughs> grunt in annoyance about that, and Han says, not if you round down. So Chewie could have been saying, that's a lie, it was more than that, and Han saying, not if you round down, which, based on what L3 says in the narrative, suggests that Han at least is correct in rounding down, because according to L3, the run was made in a little over 12 parsecs. So, yes, it is actually kind of correct to say 12 parsecs if you're rounding down, <laughs> and the whole less than 12 parsecs, well, you know, that's just a story that's changing over time, but... One thing's for sure, the Millennium Falcon itself seems to be operating faster in Lando's estimation. As he's leaving Savarine, he notes that it does seem faster and wonders if this permanent drip of coaxium that got put into the Falcon is having a permanent effect on the ship. So that could be the case, and it could be why it is, in fact, the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. And that is going to do it for our episode today. We will talk all about the double and triple crossing tomorrow. And, you know, for now, hey, if you're not subscribing to the podcast, please subscribe. If you're not contributing to the podcast or not supporting it and you think it's worth supporting, then please do at patreon.com slash SW7X7. And thank you so much for joining me for this episode. And finally, last but not least, may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2018, Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.